Now we haven't tied one of Mike Vala's bucktails and streamers in a while, so I think we're about due. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So the pattern I'm doing today, I got from Mike Vala's tying and fishing bucktails and other hair wings. This one is called the poison. Now he doesn't mention who created the fly, but he does say that he learned to tie it from a 1943 article by Charles Fox in Pennsylvania Angler. So we know the pattern's at least that old. And I don't know if I would call this a forgotten fly because it is in Mike Vala's book, but I couldn't find any other information out there on it. But it's a really cool pattern for a bucktail. It's got a big fuzzy orange wool body, which is pretty odd for a, you know, a streamer or a bucktail. Now it's not hard to tie, but I know this is gonna be an effective fly up and down the East Coast, probably all over the country. And I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, a poison bucktail. And I'm tying this kind of small for a streamer. This is a number eight. Uh, you can go up to number six, probably number four with it if you like big bucktails. But I'm going with a number eight because I fish kind of small streamers here in Maryland. And I'm going to use black thread. I'm going to lay a base down to the start of the bend. Now the tail on this guy, it's red hackle fibers. Just a, a clump of hackle fibers from cheap red strong saddle hackle. And a little bit longer than a hook gap. Not as long as a body, but it's not an insignificant tail. Let's, let's catch, uh, okay, I think that's going to look good right there. A couple tight wraps to lock it in. Now I'm just going to keep this right here. A uh, couple of loose wraps. I'll snip it off here in just a second. Before it gets too messy on me, let's go ahead and snip that off. And that should be fine right there. Now the next component we're going to tie in is a rib. And it's a gold rib, which really looks pretty cool compared to this bright orange uh, wool body we're going to put on. So a mylar tinsel, I'm going to catch it in right on top with the gold side toward the hook. That way when I flip it, you know, you'll see the gold. Now before I forget, tell me what you think of this backdrop. Is this, is this working? You know, I, I did green for a long time, but it was kind of bright and it's starting to bug me. So I went back to the blue, which eh, it's kind of plain. So I'm going to try this one. So please leave me a comment if you think this backdrop works or you like the blue or the green better. Okay, we got that rib caught in. Now let's just take our thread back to where we're going to start dubbing it. Right, eh, right there is close enough. Okay, now what I did, I didn't have any green wool dubbing, so I just took some um, or not green, I'm sorry, orange. I didn't have orange wool, so this is a wool yarn. I just cut some small pieces up, put it in my coffee grinder. Now I got a big orange fuzzy body. Fuzzy wool. And I'm definitely going to put some wax on here. And I'm going to make a noodle maybe four inches, and that probably won't get me all the way up. I might have to do this twice, but I'm going to put it on here kind of thick. We might end up pulling some of it out anyway because we want this thick body. For a bucktail, one of these optic bucktails, um, this is a little bit unique and then it has a fuzzy wool body. You can tie on with a sleek body, but I'm going by Mike Vala's recommendation in this book and I think it looks pretty cool with this fuzzy body. So I've got that in right there and I will take a couple of wraps until I'm laying some of this dubbing down and now I'll spin a little tighter just to help get it caught in. So just take this big, fat, fuzzy body uh, all the way up. And again, I'll probably have to put some more on in just a second. Okay, let's see if that's gonna get us up as far as we want. Okay, I think so. All right, now let's just wrap this, this rib. And I am not going to counter wrap it. I'm going to wrap it the same way as I, I did that dubbing. Kind of slide it right in those natural grooves. And I'm going to end up picking some of this one out to, to fuzz it all up here in just a second. 
Okay. Now one tip, when you're wrapping uh, a Mylar tinsel rib, if you're not counter wrapping it, you have to be careful that it doesn't unwrap on you. So I will fold it back over and get a couple of wraps right there just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere on me. Now we can cut that off. And before we go to the bucktail, I want this to be a little bit fuzzier than that. So I'm going to take my Velcro and just pick it out a little bit right underneath it, getting it a little bit of fuzzy, fuzziness, kind of fat body right here. Okay, I think that's going to work. Let's get a little bit of that one right there, fuzzier. Okay, I think that's going to be fine. I did, did kind of hide some of that gold, but don't worry. When you get it wet, you'll see it. All right, so next component here is the bucktail, brown bucktail. And I wouldn't say it's a sparse bucktail, but it's not huge. It's not real thick. So I got a, a medium-sized clump in my stacker here. So you're going to go about like that right there. I forgot to put any wax on here, so let's put a little wax just on that first inch or so. So I'm measuring my length about to the back of that red tail. I think it's going to be fine. My thread's hanging a little bit in front of where I want this to be tied in, but I'll show you why I'm doing that, because I'm probably going to have to take a couple wraps going back if it starts flaring up. So I got my length measured, and I put one wrap just around the hair, and then come back down, and then kind of bind it right there. And now hopefully that bucktail is just on the top. Okay, it is, but it's flared up a little bit more than I like, so that's why I started the thread just a couple of turns up, gives me the latitude to make a couple of uh, medium wraps right there to lay that back down. Now I can go up forward with my tighter wraps before cutting it off. So that's the profile I want with that wing. Let's get in here and just lift this up and cut it at an angle so we can get a tapered head. Okay, I think that should work just fine. I'm going to spend a few wraps right here to just bind this in before I tie on the last component, which is our jungle cock eyes. These little guys right here. Now I know a lot of new tires are not going to have these. Jungle cock capes are pretty expensive. You can either use imitation ones or skip them. You know, lots of people will skip them. So I'm just going to lay it on right there and I'll do a couple of wraps to check my position. Okay, I think that uh, looks good, but maybe I want it just a little bit down. So I'm going to try to grab the front and then pull the front up to get that back just laying a little bit down. There we go. That's exactly what I want. So a tight wrap right there to kind of lock that in. And then do the same thing on the near side. And I'll just try to get these matched up with uh, the length and um, the angle. So okay, that's the, the far side. There's the near side. That one's just a little bit shorter, but you know what? Doesn't have to be perfect. So I've got enough wraps right there to secure those. And I'm going to just try to poke these stubs back up so I can snip them off. Okay, I think that's fine. I'm going to take my thread right back behind the eye and build this ramp. Now, one thing Mike Valla did have in his Bucktail and Streamers book, he had a big head and he painted an eye on it. And I'm not going to do that because I think the Jungle Cock eyes can serve as the eyes. But if you don't have Jungle Cock, you might really want to think about this, making this a big head, big enough that you can paint some yellow eyes and with white pupils in them. I think that looks great. Or I think it was yellow eyes with the black pupil. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let these jungle cock eyes serve as my eyes. I'm going to just go ahead and whip finish it. I got a little bit of fuzz on that thread right there. But this is going to be a decent fishable fly. What I sometimes say, you know, don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. This thing is good enough. A little bit of head cement on that will hide some of those that black fuzz right there. 
And I might want to trim that because I did get a little crazy when I was plucking that out. But there we go. I think that's fine. Some head cement on this or UV resin. And this guy's going in my box. So pretty cool looking streamer. Pretty cool bucktail called the Poison. I appreciate you watching, everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.